Oh hey everyone, didn't notice you right there. You might be wondering what I'm doing out here. Well, because of my not alcohol binge and my crippling debt from Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, I'm going through a little thing I like to call homeless. Don't worry, it's only a phase. But, you know, it is pretty cold and boring out here. I could really use something to do right now. Oh hey, it's a Sonic game. Wow, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are so awesome. Let's see how great Sonic Adventure 3 is. Wait a minute. Sonic Heroes, the first Sonic game built for a non-Sega platform. Now yes, in 2002, Sonic Adventure 2 did get ported to the GameCube, and in June 2003, Sonic Adventure 1 did the same thing, but it took till December 2003 to get a fully new Sonic game. Development started shortly after the release of Sonic Adventure 2 in 2001. The game's main goal from the start was to appeal to more people than just the core Sonic community. So, instead of continuing on with the Sonic Adventure formula, they decided that they needed to make the game feel more like the Genesis games, with significantly more linear stages and more casual gameplay so it was easier for newcomers. Later, the game came out in 2003 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. But enough with that, I want to cover my personal history with this game here real quick. So if we rewind back to around 2008, I got my first console, being the Nintendo GameCube. And alongside it, I got Mario Kart Double Dash, and it came with the bonus disc which had a Sonic Heroes demo on it. Now I would play this demo relentlessly, even though it only had two stages. But around 2010, I got the full game of Sonic Heroes for Christmas. Played it a lot, and almost beat it. And then for some reason I stopped playing it, and I don't really know why I did that. But anyway, I didn't really come back to the game until around late 2019, and then here we are with me reviewing it. But enough with the history, let's get into this game. So before we actually get into playing the game, we have to talk about the characters, and oh boy there are a lot of them. In total, there are 12 characters split into 4 teams. Now, to make things more simple, the characters are split into three archetypes, being speed, strength, and flight, instead of having different abilities for all of them. But anyway, we have Team Sonic that consists of Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails. Team Dark has the returning characters of Shadow and Rouge from Sonic Adventure 2, as well as Omega being basically like Gamma from Sonic Adventure 1. Team Rose consists of Amy Rose, Cream the Rabbit, who's a new character to this game, and... Well, I can tell you what team I already dislike. And finally, we have Team Chaotix, who's basically one giant retro revival with the characters of Vector, Espio, and Charmy, coming from the 32X game Knuckles Chaotix. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of having all these different teams? Well, they basically act as difficulty. Team Rose is the easiest, Team Sonic is the most normal, Team Dark is the hardest, and Team Chaotix is getting crabs. Now, I'd personally say Team Sonic is the best to play as because it feels as if the stages fit them the most. But anyway, let's move on from the characters. Let's talk about the stages, and there's a fair amount of them. Instead of having a ridiculous 30 stages like Sonic Adventure 2, we only have 14 this time around, which is much more manageable and normal. But this time the stages with the same theme are lumped into the same zone with a boss at the end. But anyway, let's actually start talking about those said stages. First off, we have Seaside Hill, and this stage is great. Now, is it as great as City Escape? I don't know. But what I do know is that I love this stage. You have all the green hills and beaches, and then once you start getting farther into the stage, you start getting some of the ruins, and it's just so cool. Also, I played this stage so much back in the day, seeing that it was one of the two stages on the Mario Kart bonus disc, so I'm definitely nostalgic for it. Next up is Ocean Palace, and it's pretty cool. Not as good as Seaside Hill, but still pretty solid, and it looks pretty similar to the last stage. Though there are some parts set apart from Seaside Hill, those being giant turtles and bladed rocks chasing you. Next is Grand Metropolis, and I think this stage can be summed up in one statement. Cool, but impractical. For example, the energy bridges that make you go faster. 
They look cool, but you don't need any help with flinging yourself off the edge because you go way too fast in this game already. Power Plan is up next, and... Well... Take Grand Metropolis and add Nuclear Meltdown. Yeah, that's Power Plant for ya. Next is Casino Park, or as I like to call it, Complete Agony. Why might you ask? Well, it's a pinball stage, and that right there is not good news. Think of it as a Sonic Spinball, but with worse controls. Meaning this stage blows, moving on. And next up is Bingo Highway, and this stage just makes me wonder, why are there so many casino-themed stages in Sonic? You have Casino Night Zone, Kinda Carnival Night Zone, Casinoopolis, and then this. It's quite weird, and I have to say, this stage is pretty annoying, I don't like it. Rail Canyon is our next stage, and I have to say, this stage is pretty cool. It's pretty fun going really fast on these rails. And there's also these really cool looking heavily armored trains, and all around I think this stage just looks pretty cool. Next is Bullet Station, and it's pretty similar to the Rail Canyon. You get the rails, the trains, and a lot of places to fall off. Though I can't shake the feeling that I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, the siege weapons, I forgot about that. Frog Forest is our next stage, and it's pretty interesting. The whole gimmick here is that there are these frogs that can make it rain so the plants grow so you can abuse them by jumping on them. All around, pretty solid stage. Lost Jungle's up next, and it's a jungle that, get this, might be lost. Oh, and there's a giant alligator that tries to eat you, and it's really easy to die from it because the controls bug out. Our next stage is Hang Castle, and I actually kind of like this one. It's a stage set in a haunted house with ghosts and invisible paths, and an actually functioning anti-gravity mechanic. Yeah, that's right, take that, crazy gadget. Mystic Mansion is next, and at the beginning I thought I liked this stage, but once you get to the end with the trials for all three characters, then it becomes the literal definition of anxiety. Yeah, if you don't get it, I'm not a big fan of this stage. Egg Fleet is up next with its copious amounts of airships, and to be honest, I really enjoyed this stage. The main goal of the stage is to grind around on rails in the sky and blow up airships. And as the Hindenburg taught us, exploding airships look pretty cool. And finally, we continue the trend of having our last stage begin with Final, with Final Fortress. And I'm not gonna lie, this stage sucks. First off, we have these really tanky enemies all around, so we have to deal with them the entire time. Then you also have to jump from rail to rail in certain areas, and the game has a bad habit of flinging you off the edge into the depths of hell. Anyway, I would give this stage a thumbs down out of 10. And that was all the stages in Sonic Heroes. And I have to say, I have very mixed opinions on them. There were some really great stages in there, like Seaside Hill and Egg Fleet. But then you get some really, really bad ones, like Casino Park, Lost Jungle, and Final Fortress. But now, we have to ask the question of what was my favorite stage. It was Seaside Hill. If you're shocked by that choice, don't be, because we all know it's the best Sonic Heroes stage. But anyway, moving away from the stages, let's discuss the thing that holds this entire game together. The story. So this time, the story's a little bit more unique, because it's split up into five different stories. One for each team, and then the final story. So here we are, the story of Sonic Heroes. So to start off, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles are doing their thing running around, breaking traffic laws, when they decide that aggravated assault will be fun, so they go after Eggman. But then, after that, Rouge breaks into one of Eggman's bases and finds Shadow, who didn't die fighting our giant space lizard from last time. And also, there's Omega, who's mad that Eggman didn't let him kill more people. I'm not kidding, that is literally his mode of the work with Rouge and Shadow. But oh wait, we have Amy, who wants to find Sonic, Cream the Rabbit, 
who wants to find her missing Chow, and Big, who lost his stupid frog again. And then we have Team Chaotix, who are some weird group of detectives. That's it. But after going and completing all their goals, all teams group up to defeat, and get this, a giant metal Sonic. Okay, they really couldn't have got something cooler than that. The last two games had a giant space lizard and a water monster, and we just get a Metal Sonic for this one? Not gonna lie, this boss is kinda lame. Anywho, our heroes defeat Metal Sonic and then the end. That was weirdly a lot more complex than I thought it would be. Now what if you don't want to play the single player mode and you have a couple friends over and you might be wondering, what is it doing Sonic Heroes with my buddies? Well, if that oddly specific series of events happens to you, you always have the multiplayer mode. Now, if you're wondering what you do in this multiplayer, here I'll tell you. It, it's literally just racing people. But, what if you don't want to play the two-player mode? What if you want to play something random like the Chow Garden? Well, I'm here to tell you that the Chow Garden is not in this game. Now, as someone who didn't really understand the Chow Garden, I have to say... Thank God! But I know it was a popular thing in these games, and it's weird not having it here. But what else can you do in this game, I hear you asking? Well, there's an audio room, if that makes anything better. Well, here we are, the coveted different versions discussion. And where Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 did a little bit of moving around, Sonic Heroes never really got ported to anywhere. It did get a PC release alongside the consoles back in 03, which is kind of weird seeing that Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 didn't get a PC port until 2012. But, beyond that, it hasn't been ported to any other systems. Except for when it did get ported only in Europe and Japan on the PS3, but weirdly not in America. And that was Sonic Heroes, and see I said homelessness was only a phase. Now, there are some really good parts of this game, like Seaside Hill, Egg Fleet, the soundtrack, and much more that I don't feel like covering right now. But then there are some negatives, such as Big the Cat. Yeah, I can't be not homeless and know that Big the Cat exists on this reality, so I have to dispose of this game before he disposes of my sanity. <laughs> 